Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker. Yes. And we're Hi so there. happy to have Dr. Robert Jeffress with us. And yes. The senior pastor of First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. He is a Fox News contributor, well known to millions of people, of course. Yes. He, uh, Dr. Jeffers, hosts a daily radio and TV program, Pathway to Victory, mm -hmm. heard and seen nationwide and in nearly 200 countries worldwide. He's the member of the former president's, uh, President Trump's White House Faith Initiative. Welcome to our program, Dr. Robert Jeffers, we're so yes. happy to have him here today. We are. And good to see you again. And we're excited about your new book. Lori is loving it. I do. And since I was a child, I have been fascinated by heaven. Mm -hmm. I've always believed in heaven. Yes. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So that's one of my basic beliefs. That's right. <laughs> the hope of heaven. And now the older I get, the more excited I am about heaven. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Amen. That's, that's it. That's good. Right. But I, I want to ask you a, something. A couple of weeks ago, you preached a sermon on the coming persecution of the church. I wonder how much we're already there. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that for a minute before we get going? <laughs> sure, Jim. Actually, I was uh, preaching a message right after the election about how Christians should respond to President Biden. And look, nobody was more disappointed than I was in the election results, but I wanted to give people a measure of hope. And I talked about four things that a Biden presidency couldn't change. I mean, it can't change God's sovereignty. Uh, the fact is, even though the occupant of the Oval Office has changed, the occupant of the throne of heaven hasn't changed. God's love hasn't changed. God's mission for the church hasn't changed. And God's promise of Jesus' return has not changed. That's the good news. The not so good news is the Bible says before Christ comes back again, we're going to go through terrible times, 2 Timothy 3, 1 says. And I was trying to prepare the church for what I believe will be persecution. Now, the critics who watch your program and analyze every word that's said will scoff at this idea of Christians being persecuted in America. They say there's nothing like that going on or ever will go on. Well, persecution always starts with marginalization. And this is what I want your audience, Jim and Lori, to understand. Somebody has said that a moral revolution occurs when step one, the things that were celebrated are now condemned. Step two, the things that were condemned are now celebrated. And the final step, those who refuse to celebrate will be condemned. We are seeing already under the Biden administration a continuation of what uh, Obama and Biden started, and that is a celebration of the things God has condemned, whether it be the redefinition of marriage or abortion. Just one of the first acts in office of President Biden was to overturn the Mexico City policy that would be a death warrant for millions of unborn children around the country. And here's what I'm saying, Jim and Lori, whenever the culture government is celebrating and the church is condemning something, uh, you're going to have friction. You're going to have pressure. And the culture, the government is going to do anything it can to silence opposition. And so I think there is a persecution coming. I think it could be the removal of tax-exempt status of organizations that engage in so-called hate speech, translated biblical values. They could come after the FCC license of Christian stations that broadcast hate messages such as God created marriage for a man and a woman. I think you're going to see that. It was already starting under the Obama-Biden administration. They were actually trying to force Christian schools to hire uh, those who believed in same-sex marriage. Fortunately, the Supreme Court shut them down. But that's part of the radical left agenda, and I think the church needs to be prepared to stand firm when that day comes. Amen. Do you think that evangelicals will lead in their communities to take a stand against persecution? You know, we've been talking about standing lately. Yeah. Jim, I wish I could say yes. I think some will. I think the majority will not. Just look at the surveys right now and the number of evangelicals 
that have allowed the culture to shape their beliefs rather than allowing their beliefs to shape the culture. You know, when you have nearly 60% of evangelicals saying they believe there is more than one way to heaven other than faith in Jesus Christ, I'm not real optimistic about the willingness of the majority of evangelicals to stand firm. I think most of them will fold like a cheap suit. You know, ever since I was a child, uh, heaven was such a real thing in my life, and I've always mm-hmm. believed in heaven. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it's been a place of comfort and thought mm-hmm. for me my mm-hmm. whole life. Mm-hmm. And you've written the new devotional helps readers focus their eyes on heaven every day. So why did you decide to write this book? I'll ask you. Well, it's an interesting story, Jim. Actually, my original book, A Place Called Heaven, came out a couple of years ago. Many of your viewers may have seen it and read it. It became an instant bestseller. And so the publisher said about a year and a half ago, what if we took this book and turned it into a devotional that would give people a bite-sized piece of heaven every day for 100 days? What if people spent four or five minutes every morning or every evening focusing on heaven? So we planned this book a year and a half ago. Little did I know that the week it came out, we would be in the middle of a global pandemic and a political civil war in our country. But I think God knew that right now we need the hope of heaven. And you know, Jim uh, there and Lori, there's the old saying, I bet you've heard it before, talking about people who are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Well, the fact is, I've never met anybody like that. I've never met anybody who thought too much about heaven. In fact, C.S. Lewis said, our problem is not that we think too much about heaven, it's that we think too little about heaven. And then he went on to say, history has shown that the Christians who have been most effective in this world are those who thought most about the next world. And so I think if your listeners right now and viewers are looking for some hope in the midst of all the bad news around us, this is a great way to start the first hundred days of this new year focusing on the hope of heaven. It will fe- it will not only affect your eternity, it will affect your life right now as well. Yes. You, you know, I, I had a stroke a few uh, months ago now, mm-hmm. and the doctors gave me a 50-50 chance to... Go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And That's so, way to put it. but you know, Mondo, I, 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 guys, Laura, you were there in the hospital at the beginning, and mm-hmm. then the second hospital, they wouldn't let you in because right, of because the COVID, of COVID. thing. Uh-huh. And yet, peace came over me. Yes. I, I mean, yes. during that whole time, I awoke and, uh, I what I didn't awake in fear. I didn't awake thinking I was in hell or any or, <laughs> yeah. or any place else. Right. I was at peace. Yes. So you know, heaven's yeah. a real place. It is. Amen. And it is. Uh, so if anything happens to us on earth, we go to heaven if we believe in Christ and He's That's Savior. That's right. That's it. And so it's that is a good thing. So most Christians rarely think of heaven during their day to day lives. Probably, do you believe we should be more heavenly minded? <laughs> I I do, Jim, and and here's why. I want your viewers today to just imagine that your employer told you that in six months you were going to be relocated to a foreign country and that the move was going to be a permanent move. What would you do for the next six months? I mean, obviously, you'd have current responsibilities at your job you needed to complete. You had family responsibilities, other responsibilities. But if you were smart, you'd start preparing for that move. You'd want to be sure you understood everything you could about that new country. You'd want to check out the best schools for your children to attend. You'd want to find out about the culture and the climate. You'd want to make sure that you had and understood the currency and the money exchange and what kind of money was accepted there. And most of all, you'd want to be sure you had the right passport. You can't get into a foreign country without the proper passport. Well, the same thing is true for us. God has told us that if we've trusted in Christ for our salvation, we are making a relocation. That's inevitable someday. We don't know the departure date, but we better have our bags packed and be ready to go to that place called heaven. So yes, we need to spend not all of our time, but some time certainly preparing for that ultimate move that's going to affect every one of us. How will thinking about heavenly or heaven daily change our mindset and how we live? 
Well, I think uh, in a number of ways. I think, uh, first of all, thinking about heaven, and this is so important, thinking about heaven doesn't cause our present day problems to uh, evaporate. Uh, Jim, it doesn't automatically cure you of, uh, uh, of, of the stroke that you experienced and the limitations that may have placed on you, but it does put those problems in perspective. And, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul said, these momentary light afflictions we experience are nothing compared to the eternal weight of glory that awaits us. Now, think about that. Paul said our afflictions are light and momentary. When you look at what he went through, beaten nearly to death three different times in his life, shipwrecked, ultimately beheaded, he said those problems are nothing compared to what awaits me in heaven. One writer said it this way, from the perspective of heaven, the most horrific experiences we've ever had here on earth will be viewed one day as nothing more than a one-night stay in an inconvenient motel. And that's what motor thinking about heaven does. It puts our problems in perspective. It really does put our problems in perspective. Yeah. I love yeah. that, Dr. Jeffries. On day 36, you say heaven is not boring. <laughs> Can you explain that for us? That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I like that because I think heaven's not going to be boring. But mm. uh, tell us about heaven not being boring. You know, Jim and Lori, I think one reason some Christians are not that excited about the idea of going to heaven is secretly they harbor the fear that heaven is going to be one unending church service 24-7, <laughs> and they have a hard time getting excited about that. Well, the fact is worship is going to be a part of what we do, and it's going to be worship like we've never experienced before here on earth. While worship is one thing we're going to do, it's not the only thing we're going to do. We're also going to work in heaven. Now, that may even sound more like hell to some people, you know, working in heaven. But remember, God created us to be workers. Work was a gift from God before the fall of Adam and Eve. God meant for us to find fulfillment in our work. He's a worker. He created us to be workers. But in heaven, the new heaven and the new earth all of the things that drain the joy out of our work, bodies that grow tired, strained relationships, government regulations, all those things will be removed, and we're going to enjoy work like God intended us to enjoy it. And I want your viewers to think about this. God has given you unique gifts, unique passions in life. Why would you think those would be limited just to this world and the few years we spend on earth? We are heavenly beings, eternal beings. The interests, the gifts you have will certainly transcend death and be with you throughout all eternity. I mean, uh, you know, Jim, you and Lori are broadcasters. There's no reason to think we won't be broadcasting in the new heaven and new earth throughout the universe. Uh, you're a builder, Jim. You're one of the biggest builders I know in Christendom. You have a vision for things, and you're able to put that vision into reality. Do you think God's going to use that gift just here on this earth? I think we're going to be working, and we're going to find fulfillment like we've never experienced it before. Mm. Oh, wow. So good. That's wow. exciting. It is exciting. <laughs> I've, I've always mm. said, uh, I hope I get to build in heaven. You I hope have. God has something for me to do <laughs> in right. building something, That's you know. exactly and, right. And uh, I, I kind of believe that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, because I don't want to just sit around. <laughs> I have a feeling you're <laughs> going like, to be, be pretty. I'm busy. anxious to get out on the fields of, of building the new uh, studio. studio, the Absolutely. Hall of the Prophet studio. Yes. Which is uh, the, the the blueprints of draw, being drawn mm -hmm. and everything, you know, is being mm -hmm. ready. For the, and we dug the. The earth we out. Broke ground broke on ground. your on your 81st birthday, honey, so, on January 2nd. Went out there. It was snowing. Dr. Jeff, it was snowing, and we got yeah. out there, and we broke ground. It was super amazing, and um, we are looking forward to building this yeah. new studio to bring in, you know, the great uh, pastors, revivalists, prophets, and minister and preachers to to minister the word of God as we gather together, we fellowship together, 
And I want, I would love Dr. Jeffers. I love you to come and talk about everything. Well, I listen to you all the time on Pathway to Victory, which I love. And this book, your devotional, which I'm so grateful that that the publisher said, why don't you put together, you know, a, a devotional that we can take a few minutes a day. And I've been flipping through this and reading it. And the more I read, the more I want to read. I want to go to the next day and the next day and the next day. It is so, this is so, it makes heaven so precious and real. And it actually gives comfort to me personally for those that have transitioned into heaven. This would be a beautiful gift to give. You know, so many people have transitioned into heaven. So many of our loved ones have gone there. And it helps us here on earth, in my personal opinion, to understand where they are. And and that, you know, this life is temporary. And we always say that, but do we really believe it as, you know, and do we really know Jesus as our personal Lord? And I Savior? want everybody to get this. Book. I do too. This is something that you should, you should know about heaven mm-hmm. and yes. you should dwell upon it. I love instead it. Instead of dwelling on the things that are so, you know, in turmoil today. Yes. And this is a great, 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 great subject. Right. And I love the subject of heaven. Right. I, I just think that. It hasn't even entered the man, his the heart, man, that right. God's pre- what well, God's prepared for them. That's right. And so I know <clears throat> this is an exciting book. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, how much is this if they order it, $20? That's right. So there's one book for one of these beautiful devotionals. It's a beautiful hardback, you know, hardback devotional. 100 right days. size for it is. devotional. It's perfect size. I love it. 100 Days of Living in the Hope of Eternity. And so you receive one for twenty dollars, and that That's includes free shipping, shipping and handling. And handling. Mm-hmm. That's but all. But you cost. know, Lori, I little Lori, I always say, you know, I love what I call the friends and yes. family offer. Mom and loves to give, and I have a feeling she's going to slip these in her purse, and they're she's going to be giving to them to everyone around town. So we do <laughs> have an offer for three of the books, and you can order that today for a donation of fifty dollars or more, mm-hmm. and that includes shipping and handling. That's right. I think this time. This this would be a good little uh, Easter gift that, that you could give to a grandma, you could mm-hmm. give to mom, dad. Mm-hmm. You could <clears throat> literally give this for uh, Easter, mm-hmm. for Mother's Day, mm-hmm. yes. for all the events that are coming up this right. spring, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think I think the friends and family offer on this deal would be really, really good. Absolutely. So you get to, how I many books? It. You'll receive three of the Place Called Heaven devotionals for a donation of $50, which includes the shipping and handling. Oh, that's a discount. That even. is. That's a great deal. So three of them for mm-hmm. $50. Mm-hmm. That includes shipping that's and right. handling. Yes. So you got a wonderful Easter gift or birthday gifts or just because, you know, there's so many people. And of course, so many of us know so many people, even during this you know, past you have year a, now. You used to have a drawer <laughs> for gifts. Yes. You now have no, a room. I, 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 <laughs> Now that all the kids have moved out, I have a gift ring. I have a room where I can put. And you got shelves in that room. <laughs> What's up in those shelves, Lori? You want to keep A lot of books. Books, uh, books, that I, books. books that I love and believe in. And, but and, so, but if somebody came to our house with a group or something, and yes. and, and and we wanted to give them a little gift, mm-hmm. right. she's got something right she there, does. ready mm-hmm. to go. Mm-hmm. That's you right. Know, she ha- may have to go in and wrap it, but <laughs> but she'll have it. She has them all, or she can just hand it to them. Mm-hmm. But I also keep, you know, I keep books like but this, this would, that I love. And this would in. be something for people to put in their gift drawer. That's right. Mm-hmm. Or their gift closet. I even put, you know, books, as you guys know, that watch on a regular basis, that, you know, books that I really love and believe in. And this one, I do. I love it. Like, I can't put it down. I keep wanting to read more and more and more about heaven. And, um... It, it and this I, I keep in my car, like in my the trunk of my car, and you could because you just never know, and you know who's going to come along the pathway of your life, and you're able to bless somebody with something that wow, talk about something amazing, heaven, mm-hmm. and I I don't think that we do talk about it enough. We don't focus on it enough, and it's helped me even as we've gone through this time of turmoil, and we're going through it in the United States and mm-hmm. all of this. 
and you know the disappointment that you know we've all gone through and um with our with our government and to me this just got this just really encouraged me a lot do you have a devotional that you particularly like in the book or there, well, I I loved it when I turned, you know, to the first page and and oh, about you start right out for the yeah, page. I did, and I love them all. I mean, I can't say that I love one more one more than the other. There is one in here that though, Doctor Jeffers, I was looking at um, when you talked about a lot of people ask, you know, am I going to have my relationships that I have here on this earth and heaven? And um, I was reading that. You said yes, and that, yeah, we are going to know one another. Is that right? Yeah, that is, and I want to say a word about that, but you made a great point, Lori, just a moment ago about giving this book to other people. One group you, everyone ought to consider giving it to is somebody who doesn't know the way to heaven through Jesus Christ. This book is a great way to share your faith in a non-offensive way. You know, one thing I've seen throughout these last months of the pandemic is many people have had to come to uh, terms with their own uh, mortality. Uh, they're fearful of death. You know, my wife said the other day to me, Robert, we don't have some cemetery plots. We need to go out and buy some cemetery plots. So we spent a day looking for cemetery plots. That's a sobering experience. But we were fearful of death, but some people are. This book would be a great non-offensive way to share with somebody about how to know the way to heaven. Look, the only reason God left us here on earth is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So that's just one other group you might think about giving this devotional to. Now, to answer your question, Lori, yes, without doubt, we are going to know one another in heaven. What most people forget, or they just don't understand, is when we die, we don't become somebody else in heaven. It is we who go to heaven, not somebody else. Uh, just think about Jesus and his resurrection body. The Bible says that Jesus was the prototype of all those who will be raised from the dead. Jesus had a physical resurrected body. His disciples recognized him, though not, not always at first. Uh, he was known by his name. Uh, some of his characteristics were the same, even the way he broke bre uh, bread. Uh, we retain our appearance. We retain our personalities. We even retain our names in the new heaven and the new earth. Think about Jesus. He was our, our God calling his servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have been dead for hundreds of years, but he was still calling them by their earthly names. Now, I know some people say what well, the Bible says, God's going to give us a new name. There may be an additional name, just like he gave some of the apostles, but we retain our basic personality, our names. And now here's one final thing. Think about this. Even our family relationships will stay the same. We'll be known by families. No, we don't marry in the same way that we do here on earth, but that doesn't mean we don't know our mate and have a relationship with them. Ephesians 3 talks about the families of God on heaven and on earth. There is an unbreakable bond with our families that I believe transcend this life and extend into the next life as well. Oh, amen. Well, I and love that I, thought. I do too. Because this is such a, an encouraging yeah. uh, broadcast today. We need this right now more than ever. And I also I, think it's, I think it's, I don't know if this is the right word to use with you, Dr. Jeffers, but I think it's cute that your wife said, you know, we don't have, you know, the plots for to go to be buried in. And, but it is sobering, but, and it's great that you went and prepared, you know, something because Jim and I have talked about this too. <laughs> so you're amazing. I'm a shark. I, I love we, you. We have this great, great, great weeping willow tree that we did have. It, yeah. it passed away last year for some mm. reason. It I just know. died. Oh, man. Great big tree. Sad. And uh, I said, well, I'll, I think I'd like to be buried by that tree, you know, <laughs> because I love that. Be, be nice to be under that tree. And, yeah. You know, mm. And, uh, well, now the tree's gone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where I'm going to be buried. Yeah. <laughs> but where, I, I'm thinking where? of being buried, being buried up at Prayer Mountain. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes. I mean, at my age, all your friends are dying, mm -hmm. you, you know, mm -hmm. be, because I'm at that age. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And so I'm thinking about all those people. I'm thinking all those people used to work for me. Right. Mm. Some, that so many of them have gone to be with the Lord. Some of the mm. great mm. people, yes. like uh, Charlotte cool. Whiting, who <laughs> ran the, the <laughs> ministry, the church, the mm. buildings, and yes. just was just mm. great people. I can imagine that if you get to heaven, or they're all up there. Mm. Yes. And can you imagine them? All your friends running to meet you, mm. and they're saying. It, have you met Jesus yet? Have you seen Jesus? <laughs> and they said, no, let's, wow. and they said, let us take it to the throne room and let you see, meet Jesus. I mean, I mean, heaven is going to be mm-hmm. an amazing place. Yes. Yes. It's where we go as, you know, the, the hope of our future yes. is in Christ Jesus. Mm, there are and, so many in here that are so amazing. I, lo- I know it's not on, there, there are diff- different uh, questions here, but I will say that, um, I loved the on pay on a day uh, ninety eight deal with past mistakes you talk about, and um, at at the question you ask, and this is what's great about this. It's it's a short little devotion, and then you ask a few questions to the reader, um, Doctor Jeffers, and it's you said if you died today, what would your obituary say? I mean that's that's pretty amazing to think about, and you also asked us what changes can you make in your life now to change the way you will be remembered and that's why you know it's so important you know what's so amazing Earth. that you're it's talking about heaven today because 2020 even now into 2021 heaven was one of the most researched subjects on google yeah because as oh. people are dealing with the coronavirus and mm-hmm. as people are dealing with death unexpectedly they want to know and they have to face the fact that They've heard about heaven. They've gone to church as little boys and girls, but they have to be faced where, with the subject of heaven. And it's so amazing that people, in this research, they found that heaven, talking about heaven, research about heaven, mm-hmm. brought them peace and found a way back to their religion, back to Christ, back to the scriptures that grandma used to tell them yeah. in Bible. Uh, and I want to tell you something. There's something special about heaven. And books have been written about heaven. But right now, as we're watching the coronavirus just sweeping the nation and the world, people are finding hope just talking about heaven, having the conversation about heaven. It's like God is moving the negative into a positive to talk about heaven in homes where, you know what? The conversation of heaven left at home long time ago, but somehow this crisis is bringing the subject of heaven back into the living rooms, Mm -hmm. back into our kitchens. In what way? I mean, this devotional, when we got it, right, Miss Kim? When we got it, we were excited about this subject because somehow it brings peace. And when you talked about that peace, what you were going through your situation in the hospital, and we couldn't get to you, Dad. I know Maricela and I, we're talking about this the other day. One of the most difficult things was not to get to dad mm-hmm. or to you, mm-hmm. but knowing that you felt peace, that brought hope to the family, knowing that you were okay with God. If something would happen, mm-hmm. uh, we were going to be okay because we were going to meet you in heaven, you That's know, right. and to know that that brought peace in our soul. I, I never worried a minute about dying. Mm. I, I'm surprised. I look back at it. And I think, man, I should have been stressed. <laughs> and there, the stress was, that was one thing I was, I wasn't stressed. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's just knowing that you're right with God. Amen. So how should a Christian prepare for life in heaven? Yeah. Well, first of all, if it's a Christian, of course, they've already got the right passport. And by the way, the only passport that will get you into heaven is not one that is stamped uh, Catholic or Baptist uh, or Jewish. The only passport that will get you into heaven is one that is stamped forgiven by Jesus Christ. Only forgiven people enter into heaven. But once you have that passport, I think it's, uh, Jim and Lori, important to know that heaven is not going to be the same for everybody. There are what the Bible terms rewards in heaven for those who have lived their lives particularly faithfully. 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10 says, We have as our ambition, whether here or absent, to be pleasing to Him. Why? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one of us may be rewarded for what we've done in our bodies, whether it be good or worthless. 
there is going to be our, a judgment. Now listen, our good works are absolutely worthless to secure a place in heaven. That's only through the grace of Jesus Christ. But our good works after we're saved have a great deal to say about the kind of heaven we experience. And here's the paradox. As brief as this life is here on earth, how we spend these few years determines our eternity. I say it this way in a place called heaven, what we do on earth reverberates in the halls of heaven forever. I, I, I close with this little quick story. Uh, you probably know the name of Alfred Nobel. He was the uh, chemist who invented dynamite, and he made a fortune doing so. One day, his brother died, and the newspaper accidentally printed Alfred's obituary instead of his brother's. So he had the opportunity to actually read his own obituary. And when he read it, he realized that he was going to be remembered as a merchant of death and destruction. He didn't want to be remembered that way. And he decided to make a change in his life, and he took his fortune and uh, invested it in establishing the Nobel Peace Prizes uh, for humanitarian efforts. The fact that we're going to die one day as Christians ought to motivate us, perhaps even right now, to make the changes in our life that we know would be most pleasing to God so that we can one day hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. What's one of the biggest misconceptions you heard about heaven? Yeah, you know, I think one of them we touched on a few moments ago is uh, the idea that we become somebody else when we go to heaven. That's not true. We become the best version of us God ever intended us to be, but we're individuals. Uh, I think another myth is that heaven's the same for everybody. It's not. There are degrees, uh, different experience of heaven based on our faithfulness uh, to Jesus Christ. But I think perhaps the most deadly myth is that everybody's going to heaven. Uh, we hear these accounts of people who say they died and they went to heaven, some of them say, and they saw people of all faiths, including those who had never trusted in Christ. They saw a bright light welcoming everybody in. Let me remind you that Paul said Satan appears as a light, an angel of light to deceive people. Any vision of heaven that says that everybody is welcome and nobody is shut out of heaven is a, a, a deception of Satan. Jesus talked about heaven, but he talked more about hell. Hell is a reality. It is the default destination of those who die without trusting in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. On day 89, you say nobody dies before their appointed time. And how can we know that for certain? Well, Psalm 139 tells us that every day of our life was recorded in God's book before there was one of them. And the fact is your birth date, the day of your death are written in indelible ink in God's calendar and nothing is going to change that. That gives me a lot of comfort. You know, somebody said, every person is immortal until his work on earth is done. And uh, Jim, God's plan for you was not finished. Some people may have thought it was last year, but it wasn't. God has more for you and Lori to do, for this ministry to do. And uh, that's why we don't need to fear death. Nobody leaves this world one moment sooner or one moment later than God has planned before the foundation of the world. What Bible verses about heaven would you say most people find surprising? Do you have something like that? Yeah. You know, I think about Jesus' words that really were the inspiration for this book, A Place Called Heaven. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. That word place, tapos in Greek, means a geographical location. Heaven is not a state of mind. When Jesus ascended this earth on the Mount of Olives that we've all been to so many times, when Jesus left the Mount of Olives, he was leaving a geographical location. He wasn't going into a state of mind. He was going from one location to another geographical location. And by the way, in Acts 1, he said one day he's going to come out of that other geographical location right here to this earth to set up his kingdom. And that's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. To me, those are some of the greatest and comforting, most comforting words about the reality of heaven. You, you said that what we do on earth reverberates in the halls of heaven forever. What do you mean by that? I mean, not one of our things that we do in the name of Christ ever falls to the ground without God's notice. Uh, God uh, has a record. He's keeping a record. You know, um, some people kind of recoil at that idea. They don't understand the idea of good works being of value to God. But the Bible says we are going to stand before that judgment seat of Christ. When he talked about that in 2 Corinthians, he said, we, that is Christians, must all appear. Now, I want to make it clear, that is not a judgment of condemnation. There is no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1 says. But it is a judgment of evaluation. 1 Corinthians 3 says that at that judgment, all of our works will be uh, tested by the fire of God's judgment. And they will be revealed to be gold, silver, or precious stones, or wood, hay, or stubble. And if any Christian's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved by fire. Now, I want to be very careful about how I say this. When he says Christians will suffer loss, I think that's saying there's going to be actual regret to some extent, as some Christians see what could have been theirs if they had been more faithful to Christ. Now, I know some of your viewers are saying, wait a minute, how could you have any regret in heaven if you were filled with joy? Just imagine your insurance agent tries to get you to increase the insurance on your home and you keep postponing it. One night you awaken, your house is on fire, you get your family together, you jump through the front window, you stand on your lawn and you're watching your house go up in flames. What would be your emotion at that time? Certainly joy that you had escaped the fire and destruction, uh, but you also probably would have a little bit of regret thinking if only I'd made the right decision about my insurance. Joy and regret can coexist. And I think in heaven, yes, the overriding emotion is going to be indescribable joy that God rescued us from the fire of hell. But I think for some, that verse is saying there'll be a little bit regret as they see what could have been theirs had they been more faithful to Christ in this life. Boy, this book is wonderful, and it is something that it's, it's, it's a great book for this Easter coming season, too, mm -hmm. it, because it. you just share it with people and share. The, like he said, you could give it to somebody to, to get saved because they'll, they'll find the Lord. That's right. Reading That's about right. heaven. And uh, so this is just it's, it's, it's a great book. Yes. Uh, so for Easter. You're going to love right? this. Just for, I would say, any time. And I love what Dr. Jeffers said about. Great about, birthday. Uh, yes. About, you know. It, Mother's it's Day. A, it's a, 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 a great coming. book to give <laughs> to somebody who maybe, you, you know, they don't know the Lord or you don't know if they're right with Jesus. And they've asked him to forgive them of their sins and, and have eternal life. And it's uh, not offensive. It's mm -hmm. everybody wants to know about heaven. Yes, I don't, I've never talked with anybody. And even kids, you know, my kids ask about heaven all the time. And as, as I'm hearing you teach on this, I'm mm -hmm. going to use this as a devotional during our nightly readings to start teaching them now about heaven and answering those questions. Yeah, that's good. I love it. So this is a great, great mm -hmm. offer, Dad. And I want to tell them they can call today. You can call to order your copy of A Place Called Heaven book for a donation of $20. You receive one book, or you can do the friends and family offer for a place called Heaven Book, three of those mm -hmm. for a donation of $50 or more to the ministry that all includes the shipping and handling. Mm -hmm. Wow, if you could take 100 days with your children yes. as a, a nightly devotional, mm -hmm. talking about Heaven, it's, oh, talking wow. about your grandchildren, let, let you them ask time questions. Them. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, when you have Heaven in planted in your heart yes mm. you don't want to you, you don't want to displease god no. yes you want to you want to stay close to him you right. do you you want to you love wanna him. get closer you want to, to him. please him yes you know? yeah and so it, it's you know, comforting it's, to hold actually i guess they call it padded but it's like yeah, it's like it's clouds like it's it is it's, like, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's like clouds it's it's unusual because it's a hardback book it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice 
wonderful, strong, hardback mm-hmm. book, and it's a mm. it's a great book, and a place called heaven, and it's just a gift of twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. That's right. For you can one. receive one for twenty, mm-hmm. or you can receive three for fifty. Yes. So this this is very reasonable, and this is the time to get them now. Yes. For all the events coming up, mm-hmm. Easter, and for. Mother's Day, Mother's Day, uh, graduation, any time, any time of the year. It's, it's a lovely, lovely little gift mm-hmm. to give to your family. This is something everybody wants to know about. Mm-hmm. Everybody really all ages. wants. They really all ages. And I love your idea, Lori, about reading it to you know, our grandchildren, your children, and and because I know like, Olivia. I mean, she's <laughs> she's a bright one. <laughs> And um, at eight years old, and she wants to know. All- She'll probably go back to school and start teaching everyone about heaven and That's all right. the things that she's <laughs> learning, you know. Yeah. I right. love it. Well, the book includes reflection uh, questions every day that will lead the readers to deeper thoughts about their heavenly home. Why is it important for readers to spend time with these questions? Well, I think, Jim, because... Uh, I used to have a mentor, seminary professor, Howard Hendricks, who used to say, remember, God didn't give us the Bible to make us smarter sinners. He gave us the Bible to increase our level of obedience to him. And that's why I don't think any uh, Bible reading, any devotional reading is complete until we ask ourselves the question, how should this truth change what I'm doing right now in my life? What is it I need to start doing that I'm not doing? What is it I need to stop doing that I am doing? And so that's why it's important to have a reflection, not just so that we fill our head with doctrinal truth about heaven, but that we take that extra step and apply that eternal truth to our daily life. On day 47, you talk about the worst surprise of all. Tell us more about that. The worst surprise of all is going to wake up five seconds after we die and find we've made a horrific mistake. My friend Erwin Lutzer says, five seconds after you die, you will experience unending bliss like you never imagined, or you will experience unending horror like you never thought possible. And I think that's a sobering thought to realize that you've gone through your life and you've made the biggest mistake of all, and that is failing to trust in Christ for your salvation. Um, You know, one of the experiences that I talked about in this book was uh, when I was a youth minister at our church, we took 200 people to Russia for a mission trip. It was 1978. And I never will forget how anxious we were to get out of Russia, Moscow. And it was the night of our flight, midnight, we were flying to Rome. I sent all the other people through check point, the passport control. I was the last person because I was the leader of the group. I reached in for my passport. It wasn't there. And the Russian guard would not let me through. My wife, we'd just been married a year, was on the other side crying. Imagine me in a gulag for the rest of my life. And finally, a friend on the other side waved the passport at me. He had taken it from me as a joke, and I was allowed through passport control. But the thing that I'll never forget is I argued with that Russian soldier about all the reasons I needed to be on the other side and should be permitted to go. He was unmoved. I had to have the right passport. And the fact is there are going to be many people who argue with God on the judgment day about all the reasons they should have been allowed into heaven. And the Lord will say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. The most important decision you can make right now to get ready for that place called heaven is to receive the forgiveness of Christ that he shed his blood to provide for you. If you die without that, you've lost everything. At the end of each devotional reading, you have a prayer specific to that day's topic. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it was so important to include those prayers? Well, I believe that, you know, prayer. It's just talking to God. It's like spiritual breathing. But so many Christians are out of the practice of praying. 
And I would say to those who may have entered this new year with the idea of reconnecting with God or starting a relationship with God, you don't feel like you have an hour to spend in a devotional. Start with three, four, five minutes. Each of these devotionals, these 100 devotionals, takes about five minutes to read. And there's a little short prayer that uh, will get you started. It will get you reconnected with talking with the one who knows you most and loves you the very best. And that's why I included a prayer to get people back into the habit of talking to their Heavenly Father. You say it's important to live without regrets. Why should everyone work towards that? You know, I liken this uh, uh, trip to heaven that we're all going to make one day to a journey to a new country. I don't know, Jim and Lori, if you've ever had this experience of being at the airport, getting ready to get on the plane, and you remember something you forgot. You forgot uh, the right uh, clothes or a belt or a purse or whether or not you turned off the gas. You have regrets right before you depart. Uh, the saddest experience I've had as a pastor is standing at the deathbed of Christians who poured out their regrets, regrets about relationships that were broken that were never reconciled opportunities never seized, experiences never had. It's the saddest thing in the world to leave this life with regrets. The good news is, if you're still alive and breathing and watching this program, you can take care of those regrets right now. Don't leave this earth, even to heaven, with a long list of regrets. Amen. Yeah. That's the Order your part. book right now while it's in stock, brand new. We're ready to ship, mm -hmm. and uh, a place called heaven. This is a hundred days of living in the hope of eternity. Yes, this is the book for you today, and just remember, get it now mm -hmm. while you're thinking about it. I love on pay on on the ninetieth day. You talk about death is a gate that leads to freedom, and you said death is necessary for Christians. And it's necessary, you know, as a part of our journey to heaven. I mean, so many people go, why, you know, why, why do we have to die? I've heard so many people say that, you know, you know, God, why would God do that? Make us die, <laughs> you know, but you say here, it's a necessary part. Mondo, the, we have just a few minutes left on the program today, yes. and we haven't had much news lately. I, I mean, we've, there's a lot of news, mm -hmm. but we just haven't been had time to on the shows. Give us a headline news right now. Absolutely. And as we give you the news, pray for our nation, pray for the leaders that are involved with what's going on. But according to LifeSite, and this is a big news that is developing across the nation, CDC announces its federal crime to use public transportation without masks. The CDC reserves the right to enforce the order through criminal penalties. This is what this article has to say. The CDC's authority in this case comes from a 1944 law. It states, and I quote, the Surgeon General, with the approval of the Secretary, is authorized to make and enforce such regulations as in his judgment are, are necessary to prevent the spread of disease. Another one from the reason.com uh, federal mass cops to start targeting travelers today. This is big because as they watch people not wearing the mask in public, the fines are can go up to 150 to thousands of dollars. Another one, this is huge right now, and this is a developing story. HR 127, a new bill in Congress will literally end your Second Amendment rights permanently. The H.R. 127 establishes a federal firearms registration system that will be accessible by federal, state, and local governments, including the military, even the general public. The system will track the make, model, and a serial number of all firearms, their owners, the dates they were acquired, and where they are being stored. Uh, 127 will also require, now this is new, all gun owners to be federally licensed. That would mean that owning a gun will no longer be a right. Instead, it would be a reduced to a privilege that the government can take away at any time. 
Are you following the story yet of Mark Lindell? He's got major stores taking his products off the shelf. Why are they doing that? Pretty much the same conversation that the reason why they are trying to cancel Franklin Graham petitions have gone up to have him uh, step down from his organization. How can a secular group demand and, and to try to destroy Franklin Graham? Cancel culture, that's simple as it is. The same organization that came after our ministry by putting up their own petition is the same organization that created this petition against Franklin Graham and every other Christ Again, another one they came up, uh, came up against was uh, Dr. James Dobson. Canceling and putting the pressure on Twitter and, and all the social media platforms. Dr. Jeffries, could you talk about what we just talked about? Uh, uh, this this is the kind of thing that's, you know, driving me crazy because good people are being destroyed with cancel culture in America. Uh, w w can you give us a, a thought about it and what we as the church can do? Yeah, and look, first of all, I condemn and I've condemned strongly on Fox News those who uh, uh, assaulted the uh, Capitol on January the 6th and killed a law enforcement officer, none of us should have any patience with that whatsoever. That's absolutely wrong. But the remedy proposed by some is very, very dangerous. And it's the idea that we're just going to uh, cancel any belief that we find objectionable. And, uh, you know, that is ironic coming from liberals who talk about tolerance. It's true they are the most intolerant people in the world when it comes uh, from beliefs that they don't agree with. And I believe, Jim, if we're ever going to have unity in this country, and I wrote this at foxnews.com, if we're ever going to have unity, we've got to respect the right of other people to hold beliefs that we disagree with. It doesn't mean their beliefs are valid, but we have to give them the right to be wrong, if you will. And that's what the cancel culture is missing. They want to silence. They want to muzzle people who don't fit the leftist agenda. And we've got to resist that effort at every point we can. Where can our readers and our viewers uh, connect with you? Do, do you have an address or anything like that? <laughs> yes, it's uh, at our website for Pathway to Victory, ptv.org. And uh, all of our messages, video and radio are online there, including this series, A Place Called Heaven, that people can listen to. So again, it's ptv for Pathway to Victory, ptv.org. Great. Okay. Well, I hope everybody orders the book today. Mm -hmm. this, too. this is a great opportunity to get ready for the Easter season and all the wonderful things you want to do. It's a great book to give to so many. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's just one of those books that fit in a, a niche, you know. Oh, it's excellent. It's excellent. I, I love this. And I, I hope every single one of you that can hear me will order at least one. But I really believe in getting a few so that you can, you know, bless others. I listened to Dr. Um, Jeff Jeffers uh, um, when he, he taught on this. And I was riveted as he taught this, this series. And um, I know, you know, if you go to his website, you can hear that as well. And, and listen and, and hear what God has to say about heaven this is all scripture right here and and then the questions that you know it just like like you said doctor it, you just take five minutes and 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 you read this and then you ask a couple questions of the reader and you're able to answer that honestly with yourself and then you lead us and and help us with a prayer because so many people really you know, they, they feel like, I can't pray. I don't know how to pray. Where it, you, you said it, it's just talking with the Lord. And this is, this is a vital yeah. book, in my personal opinion. Yes. As we go off the air, get that three-book mm -hmm. deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's I your know, deal. I'm, I love it. I know. I want to get my mom this. I know she'll enjoy this. What do you call your three deal? I call it my friends and family offer <laughs> because I want to send it. I want to yeah. send it to my best friend out in Arizona. I want to, you know, give one to my mom, get get one from my cousin. You just, I just never know, 
you know, from my brothers. It's just really important that we understand this. And, and it really, in this day and age, gives us that hope of heaven so you can receive three for fifty dollars and that includes shipping and handling and you're going to be um it, it's going to be a beautiful gift to give to somebody yeah mm -hmm. it's a blessing mm -hmm. a real blessing to people mm -hmm. well our time's totally gone today we want to thank dr jeffers for being with us today yeah appreciate him so very very yes. much we do. for all the work that he's done Amen. to influence america Amen. that's to right be a part of trying to save us from this hellish, communistic, socialistic yes. system that's trying to take over yeah, our country. Yeah, we thank you. We do, Dr. Jeffers, that's, that you stand strong and, and you speak truth. And that is what we need is, is truth-speaking people and that are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And you are one that we <clears throat> really love and look up to and learn from. So we want to thank you for being with us today. Just want to remind everyone to remember that you can make it. Yes. With God, all things are possible. And you can make it that God loves you. Yes, he, he does. really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We bye. love you.